Okay, the, informa the information content of genes is in the form of specific sequences of nucleotides found in your DNA. The DNA inherited by an organism leads to specific traits by dictating the synthesis of proteins. Proteins are the links between genotype, the genes, and phenotype, the appearance. Gene expression, the process by which DNA directs protein synthesis, includes two stages, transcription and translation. So transcription um, is when mRNA gets made from the DNA, and translation is the process by which the proteins get made from the mRNA. It is common to refer to gene products as proteins rather than polypeptides. RNA is the bridge between DNA and protein synthesis. RNA is chemically similar to DNA, but RNA has a ribose sugar and the base uracil rather than thymine. RNA is usually single-stranded. Getting from DNA to protein requires two stages, transcription and translation. Transcription is the synthesis of messenger RNA um, <coughs> that is encoded for by the DNA. Um, so transcription produces messenger RNA, and translation is the synthesis of a polypeptide or a protein using the information found within the mRNA. Ribosomes found in the cytoplasm are the sites of translation. In prokaryotes, bacteria, translation of mRNA can begin before transcription has finished. In eukaryotes, uh, the nuclear envelope separates transcription from translation, so they um, happen separately because they are physically separated. Eukaryotic RNA transcripts are modified through RNA processing to yield the finished mRNA. Eukaryotic mRNA must be transported out of the nucleus to be translated. So here we have our DNA. Transcription makes mRNA. mRNA, uh, this is a bacterial cell, so um, mRNA gets translated into a polypeptide, and this can happen simultaneously because they're not physically separated as opposed to in eukaryotic cells where the two processes are separated by the nuclear envelope. So here we have DNA, transcription makes pre-mRNA, RNA processing occurs where um, introns get cut out, exons get spliced together, the mRNA gets a cap and a tail, it leaves the nucleus and goes to the ribosomes where it gets read and a polypeptide or a protein gets made. Primary transcript is the initial RNA transcript from any gene prior to processing. The central dogma is the concept that cells are governed by a cellular chain of command. So in other words, the information starts in the DNA within the nucleus, and then it flows to the RNA, which is a copy of the DNA, and then it flows to protein. The flow of information from gene to protein is based on a triplet code, a series of non-overlapping three nucleotide words. The words of a gene are transcribed into complementary non-overlapping three nucleotide words of mRNA. So these are called codons. These words are then translated into a chain of amino acids forming a polypeptide or a protein. So here we have our DNA molecule. Our DNA molecule has two strands, a template strand, here's the template strand, that will be used to make the mRNA. So the mRNA codons, these are three nucleotide sequences, correspond to the template strand. So U matches up with A, G with C, um, A with T. And then from those codons, amino acids get brought in and strung together to make a protein. During transcription, one of the two strands, two DNA strands called the template strand, provides a template for ordering the sequence of complementary nucleotides in an RNA transcript. Template strand is always the same strand for any given gene. During translation, the mRNA base triplets called codons are read in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction. Each codon specifies the amino acid, 1 of 20, to be placed at the corresponding position along the protein. There are 64 triplets or codons, 61 code for amino acids, and 3 triplets are stop codons that end translation. More than one codon may specify a particular amino acid, but no codon specifies more than one amino acids. Codons must be read in the correct reading frame in order for the specified polypeptide to be produced. Okay, so here is a codon table with all of the codons and the amino acids that they code for. So notice that there can be several different codons that code for the same amino acid. Like for example, these six 
codons all code for leucine. AUG is the start codon. It codes for methionine, the first amino acid in every protein. And then here you have three stop codons, which will end translation. The genetic code is nearly universal, shared by the simplest bacteria and the most complex animals. Genes can be transcribed and translated after being transplanted from one species to another. Transcription is the first stage of gene expression. RNA synthesis is catalyzed by RNA polymerase, which um, pries the DNA strands apart, so it unwinds and unzips the DNA, and it also brings in the complementary RNA nucleotides. RNA polymerases, just like DNA polymerases, um, assemble polynucleotides in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction. Everything is always 5' prime to 3'. Prime. Nothing occurs 3' prime to 5'. Prime. However, RNA polymerases can start a chain without a primer, unlike DNA polymerase. So here we have our DNA molecule. We have our promoter region. That's the region where the RNA polymerase will bind and start transcription. So you can see here that RNA polymerase is unwinding and unzipping the DNA and adding RNA nucleotides. And then when it's complete, the complex will disassemble and the RNA transcript gets released. The DNA sequence where RNA polymerase attaches is called the promoter. In bacteria, the sequence signaling the end of transcription is called the terminator. The stretch of DNA that is transcribed is called a transcription unit. There are three stages of transcription, initiation, elongation, and termination. So initiation is where the um, RNA polymerase binds to the promoter. Elongation is where it brings in RNA nucleotides. And termination is when it reaches the end and releases the RNA transcript. Promoters signal the transcriptional start point and usually extend several dozen nucleotide pairs upstream of, of the start point. Transcription factors mediate the binding of RNA polymerase and the initiation of transcription. The completed assembly of transcription factors in RNA polymerase II bound to a promoter is called a transcription initiation complex. A promoter called the TATA box is crucial in forming the initiation complex in eukaryotes. So here's the TATA box, so-called because it begins with a T, A, a T, and an A. Transcription factors, these are... Um, molecules such as proteins that can increase the speed of transcription by allowing RNA polymerase to bind more easily to the promoter. Um, so here's another picture of that showing you the nucleotides that get brought in. A's match up with T's, U's with A's, and C's with G's. Enzymes in the eukaryotic nucleus modify <clears throat> pre-mRNA, RNA processing, before the genetic messages are dispatched to the cytoplasm. During RNA processing, both ends of the primary transcript are altered. Also, usually some interior parts of the molecule are cut out and other parts are spliced together. So, basically what happens is the 5' prime end receives a 5' prime cap, which it consists of modified um, guanines, and the other end, the 3' prime end, gets a poly A tail. <clears throat> so a bunch of adenines strung together. Um, these modifications uh, share several functions. They help the export of the mRNA to the cytoplasm and to the ribosomes. They protect the mRNA from hydrolytic enzymes in the cytoplasm, and they help the ribosomes attach to the correct end of the mRNA, the 5' prime end. So here is the so-called 5' prime cap and poly A tail. Most eukaryotic mRNAs have long, non-coding stretches of nucleotides that lie between the coding regions. These non-coding regions are called introns, and the regions that code for amino acids are called the exons. So during RNA splicing, uh, you have molecules that cut out the introns, the non-coding regions, and splice together the exons, the coding regions of the DNA. So here is pre-mRNA before splicing, here, and after without the introns. Many genes can give rise to two or more different polypeptides depending on which segments are used as exons. So this is a process called alternative RNA splicing <clears throat> where in one case maybe exons 1, 2, and 5 will be used. Um, in a different case maybe exons 1, 2, and 3 or 2, 3, and 4. So this would lead to 
one gene resulting in many proteins. RNA splicing is carried out by spliceosomes. Spliceosomes consist of proteins and small RNAs. So here is a spliceosome cutting out an intron and splicing together an exon. Genetic information flows from mRNA to protein through the process of translation. A cell translates an mRNA message into protein with the help of tRNA, transfer RNA. Transfer RNA transfers amino acids to the growing polypeptide in a ribosome. So here is the ribosome. These teal colored molecules are your tRNA or your transfer RNA. And notice that they have um, amino acids that are associated with them. They also have anticodons, which are complementary to the codons on the mRNA. Each tRNA can translate a particular mRNA codon into a given amino acid. The tRNA contains an amino acid at one end and at the other end has a nucleotide triplet that can base pair with the complementary codon found on the mRNA. So here's a 2D structure, amino acid, attachment site, anticodon. Here's a 3D structure and here's what it looks like in your book. <clears throat> Accurate translation requires two steps. First, there needs to be a correct match between a tRNA and an amino acid done by the enzyme aminoacyl tRNA synthetase. Second, a correct match between the tRNA anticodon and an mRNA codon must occur. Flexible pairing at the third base of a codon is called wobble and allows some tRNAs to bind to more than one codon. So here we have an amino acid and a tRNA that enters the active site of the enzyme. Um, in this case, it's tyrosyl tRNA synthetase. Using ATP, synthetase catalyzes covalent bonding, and then the tRNA gets released with the amino acid attached to it. <coughs> Ribosomes facilitate specific coupling of tRNA anticodons with mRNA codons during protein synthesis. The large and small ribosomal subunits are made of proteins and ribosomal RNAs. In bacteria and eukaryotic ribosomes, the large and small subunits join to form a ribosome only when attached to a, an mRNA molecule. Okay, we're going to talk about all these sites in a minute. A ribosome has three binding sites for the tRNA. The P site holds the tRNA that carries the growing polypeptide chain. The A site holds the tRNA that carries the next amino acid that's going to be added to the chain. And the E site is the exit site where the tRNAs leave after they've dropped off their amino acids. So here we have the exit site. This is the P site, which holds the tRNA that has the growing polypeptide chain attached to it. And then here is the A site. So this is the tRNA that's going to add the next amino acid to the growing polypeptide chain. Just like transcription, translation has three stages. They are also initiation, elongation, and termination. The initiation stage of translation brings together mRNA, a tRNA with the first amino acid, and the two ribosomal subunits. A small ribosomal subunit binds with mRNA and a special initiated tRNA. Then the small subunit moves along the mRNA until it reaches the start codon, which is AUG. Okay, so here we have the first thing that happens is your small ribosomal subunit binds to your mRNA. And you have your initiator tRNA, which carries the first amino acid methionine. It goes along and it finds AUG, which in this case is right here. And then after that occurs, your large ribosomal subunit comes in and binds. The start codon is important because it establishes the reading frame for the mRNA. The addition of the large ribosomal subunit is last and completes the formation of the translation initiation complex. Proteins called initiation factors bring all these components together. During elongation, amino acids are added one by one to the previous amino acid at the C terminus of the growing chain. Each addition involves proteins called elongation factors and occurs in three steps. Codon recognition, peptide bond formation, and translocation. Remember that peptide bond formation that's a bond that occurs between two amino acids. Translation proceeds along the mRNA in a 5' prime to 3' prime direction. Everything's 5' prime to 3'. Prime. Okay, so here we have our codon recognition. The tRNA comes in, recognizes the codon via its anticodon. The uh, amino acid gets added to the growing polypeptide 
and then this one is going to slide over into the E site, and this one's going to slide over to the P site. Oops, wrong way. Like so. Termination occurs when a stop codon in the mRNA reaches the A site of the ribosome. The A site accepts a protein called a release factor. The release factor causes the addition of a water molecule instead of an amino acid. The reaction releases the polypeptide, and the translation assembly then comes apart. Okay, there's your release factor in yellow. Brings in a water instead of an amino acid, and the polypeptide gets released from the tRNA. And then the complex disassembles. Once, often translation is not sufficient to make a functional protein. Polypeptide chains are modified after translation or targeted to specific sites in the cell. During synthesis, a polypeptide chain spontaneously coils and folds into a unique 3D shape. Remember that um, we'll start with primary, then secondary, then tertiary, then some proteins um, have a quaternary structure. If you don't remember those, you should review them. Proteins may also require post-translational modifications before doing their jobs. There are two populations of ribosomes. There are bound ribosomes and there are free ribosomes. Bound ribosomes are attached to the ER, and free ribosomes are free in the cytosol. Free ribosomes mainly synthesize proteins that will function inside the cell in the cytosol. Bound ribosomes make proteins of the endomembrane system and proteins that are going to be secreted from the cell. And then here's an overall summary of the whole process. Mutations. Mutations are changes in the genetic material of a cell or virus. Point mutations are chemical changes in just one or a few nucleotide pairs of a gene. The change of a single nucleotide in a DNA template strand can lead to the production of an abnormal protein. So this is sickle cell hemoglobin. Notice that it has an A instead of a T. That's going to change my amino acid from GLU to VAL. And that leads to the sickle cell shape of the hemoglobin. Point mutations within a gene can be divided into two general categories, nucleotide pair substitutions or one or more nucleotide pair insertions or deletions. A nucleotide pair substitution replaces one nucleotide and its partner with another pair of nucleotides. Silent mutations have no effect on the amino acid produced by a codon because of the redundancy in the genetic code. So here is a, this is called a silent mutation because even though there is a mutation in A instead of a G, since it's the third nucleotide in the codon, we still code for glycine in both cases, so that's a silent mutation. Missense mutations still code for an amino acid, but it's the wrong one. Substitution mutations are usually missense mutations. Nonsense mutations change an amino acid codon into a stop codon, nearly always leading to a non-functional protein because it's, it's too small. It's missing a lot of the amino acids that it should have. Okay, this is a missense mutation. Here we have a T instead of a C, which leads to, instead of being glycine, we have serine. Here is a nonsense mutation, which, because of the substitution, we have a premature stop codon, and therefore a smaller non-functional protein compared to this longer one. Insertions and deletions are additions or losses of nucleotide pairs in a gene. These mutations have a disastrous effect on the resulting protein more often than substitutions do because they shift the reading frame. So they are considered frame shift mutations because unless the insertion or deletion is a multiple of three, it's going to change every single amino acid after the mutation. In this case, we have an extra A which leads to a premature stop codon. Here we have a deletion, which as you can see affects every amino acid after the mutation. And here we have a three nucleotide pair deletion, which is not a frame shift, we just have a missing amino acid as a result. Spontaneous mutation can occur in recombination or repair. Mutagens are physical or chemical agents that can cause mutation.